Hello, hello, and welcome back to a new video. All this audio content to be more specific. I'm I'm trying this out because I feel like I'm never <laughs> presentable enough to do video. So let's just try if this audio thing is something that I can keep up with. Because to be honest, I really like to create something, but I just find it really hard for me. So let's see what happens so in this video we are going to wrap up 2022 i'm going to tell you all the <laughs> mis misfortunes that has happened this year and oh my god there has been a lot so let's just jump right into it well the biggest thing that has changed our lives in 2022 is that we got a puppy to be more specific he came to our home in november 2021 but of course in the beginning of 2022 he was still a little pup that was <laughs> bringing trouble all around the timing to get the puppy wasn't probably the best possible because, you know, as I am working in an accounting department, December and January are the most uh, workful months of the whole year. So uh, I had to do, even though I was working at home, I had to do a lot of overtime and concentrate a lot on the job and trying to potty train a puppy. My husband was working then a lot, so he wasn't at home. So I was kind of like the only one responsible of potty training the puppy. And also, even though the work thing wasn't kind of like enough trouble when trying to potty train a puppy, uh, there was still the fact that especially in December, there were really, really bad weather. It was really cold and really hot winds. So when I tried to bring the puppy outside to do its pee and do its thing or just overall bring it outside, uh, he would just kind of like turn around and be like, nope, I don't like it here. Fuck off. I'm going back inside and doing my pool there. So <laughs> it, it didn't go well. And again, if that wasn't enough, we got sick. It was somewhere at the end of December. Uh, when I first got the influenza, I was just, I was down. I, I could like hardly stand up and I had to entertain a puppy. <laughs> and right after that, I got Corona. So laying on the sofa and playing dead just continued. So that kind of delayed our potty training of the puppy a lot. And I really mean a lot. Uh, we could officially call him potty trained at the end of the summer in 2022. So he was like half a year old. So it didn't <laughs> go as expected because we didn't get like in immediately into the routines. So it was somewhere in February when I started taking him to kind of like training courses first to puppy course, then junior course, rally obedience, beginners, and then advanced. And towards the end of the year, we got a kind of like official placement in a kind of uh, I, I wouldn't say a competition group but you know in a group where we are a training uh, more a goal in our mind in rally obedience and I have been really happy in that and we have uh, progressed a lot and we will still still continue to progress but we go one day one week at a time and I train him as much just as I have energy but especially towards the end of the year, I have been really, really tired. So it hasn't been that much. But if it wasn't enough that we have now another dog in the house, we had a lot of misfortune uh, when it comes to dogs, especially towards the end of the year. The first incident happened when we were in our summer cottage in a different uh, town. And it's, it's kind of like a remote place in the middle of forest where the dogs can run free just there is just forest and they had been running there like two or three hours and just having fun and when they came inside of the cottage i noticed bloody paw prints on the ground and oh and i was like oh my god who is hurt which one of the dogs is hurt and i checked both of the dogs and the elder one karu had a like huge slit in his paw is is it like a paw pad in his hinder leg but we still had to go to the vet and he got stitches and some medication and I got about 800 euros of vet bill. So yay, really happy. But then I was kind of like in a good financial situation. So I was kind of like, okay, okay, I can manage this. This doesn't kind of like 
this doesn't kill me, I can manage this. The part took about six to eight weeks to heal and finally when it healed we were like yay everything is fine again and we can start going to the walks and everything is fine and dandy and yay 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 yay. So when the injury was finally healed we were kind of like really happy and just like yay we can start living normally again but it was something like a week after that when another incident happened. First of all, we were in our yard, the dogs were loose on the yard, there shouldn't be anything harmful for them in the yard. But when we came inside, the puppy, Muri, had uh, his muscle or his nose kind of like swollen. So I was kind of like, okay, he just kind of like stuck his nose to some kind of beehive or something. So I just gave him that kind of uh, medicine that um, you give when he is bitten by snake or having some kind of mild allergic reaction so i was kind of like okay that's it the swelling went down but the swelling started again in the evening and i gave him another medicine also the skin around his eyes started swelling heavily and i was kind of like oh my god what the fuck is this but in the evening when the swelling came back i just gave him another another medicine and i just kind of like made note to myself that if the swelling was back in the morning we would go to the vet but uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't the swelling that, that made us go to the vet. Because in the evening, both of the dogs started vomiting and they vomited kind of like they had a vomiting competition the whole night. And I was, I was kind of like concerned. Usually you are not concerned when the dog is vomiting. They might, you know, if they had something on the throat or they have just eaten something something nasty they they may vomit once or twice and everything is fine after that but they were vomiting the whole night and i was kind of like okay but if in the morning if they eat their food well and they are kind of like energetic we don't have to go to the vet and i gave the food muri the puppy ate the ate the food with a good appetite but karu the older one he wouldn't even look at the food. I tried to give him kind of like a meatball, which is like he he really loves meatballs. He wouldn't even sniff at it. And I know and I knew like this is emergency. We have to leave now. So we went to the vet and they took some tests and Karu's inflammatory rates or kind of like values were high up in the sky. So he was in a really bad shape. So the vet took him to kind of like look after him and gave him uh, some kind of liquid you know in the in the vein or something i don't know how things go and also uh, muri's inflammatory rates were high not as high as Carus, so i could took muri home and look after him there but he got also some liquid on the skin so that because both of the dogs were really kind of like dried up so in the evening i went and took Karu home and i got the pills for the dogs to you know so that they could heal and <laughs> again about 800 euros of vet bills yay i love this woo and this was kind of like the point that i don't know can i take any more of these <laughs> these high vet bills like please stop just stop <laughs> up to this date we don't know what caused the vomiting it might have been some kind of stomach bug or both of the dogs had a really strong allergic reaction to something. I don't know what, because I haven't changed anything in their diet. So either they ate something in the yard, which is also something that I don't believe, because Karu just doesn't eat anything he sees on the yard. Muri might, because he is still a puppy. But Karu just normally doesn't do that. So it's kind of like they both had an allergic reaction to something, but they just got, uh, it's more likely that they got some sort of really angry stomach bug that just, you know, made them vomit a lot. But uh, in a week after all the medicine, uh, they were again really energetic and started playing in the yard and everything was fine again. Yay! About two or three weeks after that, it was... November already I think somewhere in the middle of November I was going to another down with Muri to a dog show and I was really nervous because the breeder was supposed to come with me to instruct me and to help me because I haven't been in a dog show like I have been only in one and I was so lost at there and I was going to 
be so lost in the other duck show. So I was really nervous when we left in the morning. I went and uh, filled my tank, my car's tank, and we started driving. 15 minutes after that, the car just wouldn't move anymore and I had to stop uh, in the side of a highway. And I was calling my husband like, can you come and check because I'm not that far away yet. I was only 15 minutes right away. Can you come and check? Can I continue with my trip? Can you check what is wrong with the car? And as I was waiting there, I had a realization. My car is a diesel car and I had just put petrol to my car. So that probably fucked up the whole engine. Wow, great job. Usually I kind of like triple check what kind of liquid I put into what car. But this time, because I was so nervous and so anxious, I didn't. I just took the first pistol I could see and filled my tank with it. And that brought another kind of like stress factor in my life just kind of like what the fuck have I fucked up my whole car I cannot believe this we just fixed this car and I just spent a lot of money to this car with you know the spare parts and everything and did I just fuck up the whole engine like oh I was just crying in the side of the road like how fucking stupid can a human being be but fast forward uh, two weeks we finally get the car in our garage and my husband you know took the liquids out and checked all the parts and put the correct liquids in and the car starts wow it probably isn't that fucked up yet so at the moment the car is running and uh, sounding good but i still have kind of like a gnarling feeling that it might break down any minute because it would be just my luck <laughs> And I feel like this misfortune in 2022 just isn't going to stop because <laughs> this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Uh, yesterday, it was a Saturday, I have a day off and I was just laying on the couch the whole day. And my daughter was just watching TV and doing puzzles and everything. And I was just laying down and relaxing because I'm feeling really anxious for multiple reasons. It was uh, late in the evening, my daughter was already asleep and I was kind of like, okay, I have to get up and get the dogs outside for the last kind of like pee before we go to sleep. Well, I got up and I felt that I just pulled a muscle on the back of my thigh. Like, what the fuck? And it, it isn't like ripped, but it, it is really hurting. Dancing has been my hobby for 20 plus years. So I know what it feels like when you pull a muscle or it kind of like rips or when you have a really bad injury. And it felt exactly like that. And it happened when I got up from the sofa. What? <laughs> what is happening and it is really hurting now fortunately we have uh, only this week any more practices but I think I need to sit down and we don't have any competition or shows anymore they will continue in 2023 but I'm like oh Satan why me why me yeah but those were kind of like <laughs> random misfortunes that just happened to happen in 2022 but uh, I'm going to here also shortly tell you the other stress factors that have been in my life first of all I have this job that I have been in for three years I really love my job I really love the field uh, it is really challenging but also really stressful when you don't know everything when it comes to accounting and kind of like taxes and everything you learn a lot every day and I really mean every day, but it is really stressful when there are a lot of factors that you still don't know that you maybe should know. So one of my kind of like closest colleague uh, retired in March, which which meant that I had a lot more work. I feel like I have just way too much to do. But I understand that everybody else has also a lot of things to do. So I don't want to be a burden and I just try to kind of like rinse my teeth together and just kind of like go on like I can do this. Uh, I used to do a little bit over time before but now especially towards the end of the year even though the tasks are just piling and piling and piling I just feel like I, I cannot I, I have to stop immediately when my time is full. I need all the time 
I can, to be at home, to relax, to not think about work stuff. And of course, that is just bringing more stress because if I did more overtime, the tasks wouldn't be piling that much. I'm, I'm getting really anxious, really tired, really exhausted. And I feel like I'm repeating this, but that's not all the stress factors in my life, the injuries, work stress, but also now the financial issues. I used to have a really good financial balance and savings and everything. I, I have spent a lot of money training this puppy because, you know, I I knew that I had a challenging individual in my hands. So I kind of like wanted all the tips and tricks to make sure that I could train this puppy. So we went to a lot of courses with him. So I have spent a lot of money to the puppy to again new car because now that I have two two big dogs I needed a bigger car where I can you know have the dogs safely and I can you know that has enough space for the cages I needed to repair the car then there were the two uh, debt visits that were really expensive and my credit card is now maxed I'm still owning money to my husband for the spare parts and just overall of the new car and everything and I'm I'm in a really tight spot financial at the moment a little bit desperate actually and that is also stressing me out my only kind of like savior or kind of like hope in this light is now hopefully the bonuses that we are going to get in March from work but then again if I have done really poorly this year at work because I haven't just get everything done because the workload is too much I probably won't get any bonuses and it's kind of like okay for me because I understand that I haven't been that effective of an employee I I kind of like I need the bonus money really bad like oh my god I need I need it really bad to at least pay the credit card debt so that I, I knew that there would be at least some kind of back door that if I didn't have enough money in my bank account I could always use the credit card but now that the credit card is maxed there is only like I don't know 400 euros left that I could use uh, I'm, I'm really anxious because if anything else happens I will be broke and my husband has to just cover it which is making me even more anxious because I'm I'm an independent woman. I don't want the man to take care of me. I want to take care of my own costs. At the same time, it, it has been really joyful year. I have been the happiest I have kind of like been in a while. But at the same time, especially towards the end of the year, the latter half of the year, I have been really anxious and just really nervous, kind of like on the brink of breaking down. So... My only hope is that this is only kind of like a 2022 deal. And when the year turns to 2023, everything starts again from a clean table and I my luck maybe restores and my mental health probably restores because I'm going to take some steps to improve it and just overall improve my life. And when it comes to my 2023 plans about every 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 of these issues that we have and what I'm going to do in the year, uh, I'm going to do a separate video about it and talk about the action and the next steps of how I'm going to solve my issue, issues when, it's, when it comes to my overall mental health, the financial issues and uh, the work and puppy and everything. But I think <laughs> I have now rambled enough. Thank you for listening my my despair. <laughs> but we will see you some or hear you some other time. Thank you and bye bye.